Nature puts us into a state of relaxation. Some people even refer to it as a sort of resonance and a sort of spiritual quality. But what is it about nature that is inducing all of these positive effects? And so that's what we're trying to address, that there are these patterns called fractals out there in nature. Trees, rivers, mountains, lightning, coastlines. Is it those fractal shapes that are inducing all of these positive effects? Yes. <laughs> Taylor and I are, are friends. We know each other mostly through dogs. We're out in nature walking our dogs together. So we have these kind of broad-ranging conversations. And that's when we started to kind of swap notes on fractals and environment. You see this question about how fractals are in nature and how they affect human emotional well-being. That's one part of this story. You then have to start to think about how do humans go about perceiving the environment and then thinking larger term scale about ecological change. You know, we like understanding the data, but we like to think about interesting sort of things that maybe other people have not thought about before. What else? We don't have a fractal dog link. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. that? Oh, we could talk about nature's beauty. Sure. Well, that sounds good. Okay. In the 1980s, there was a movement by a biologist naturalist called biophilia, which means essentially nature loving. And he proposed that we have this innate sort of need to connect with nature. And that one of the problems with society is that we're spending so much time indoors and gradually separating ourselves from nature, that this was gonna have a profound effect. And indeed, as we look at society and look at the stress levels that are mounting, uh, there's no doubt that as we divorce ourselves from nature, our stress levels are going up. Many of us in the world spend most of our time in built environments. Uh, one way we can help deal with this uh, emotional stresses that come from environmental change can be to incorporate more fractal designs into our internal built environments. But the fractal fluency model also suggests that how we change our environments have direct impacts on our emotional and psychological well-being. When you look out at nature, what is the precise thing that's triggering all of these positive impacts? What's happening is that exposure to nature is relaxing the whole of your body. It's not sort of like a wish once she sort of, oh yes, I like to look at nature. It actually changes the whole of your physiology. And the impacts are huge. So in terms of relaxation, if you look at a pattern for just 10 seconds, it can relax your physiological stress levels by up to 60%, which is a huge amount for a non-pharmaceutical approach to stress reduction. And when you add the thought of very rapid climate change that is now being induced primarily from the burning of fossil fuels, those changes in the environment then, to the extent that they move our experience of what we see away from our fractal fluency preferences. That's gonna add potentially quite dramatic emotional burdens to people already suffering from these material changes. Surely everyone has to be interested in nature. Everybody has to be interested in beauty, you know, because that's uh, one of the most important things that we need in life. Maybe there is some spiritual connection that we have with nature that if we're not careful, we're all gonna lose. Our message is, you know, human relationship to our environment and how we have to respect it and preserve it, otherwise it will go away. <laughs>